Oh, wait. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us. I just have to clean my glasses. Thank you so much. Hello. My daughter's there. She'll be in part two. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so fun. I love this class. The Jewish star class is so fun. And then there's chocolate chip. You guys think you did great, great choices. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. So everyone will, uh, you know, at this point, we never know who will come in on time. Mm -hmm. um, I'll introduce you. I have your bio. And then we'll be on from 6 to 6.30 and then reconvene at 8, right? Yeah. Exactly. So that's perfect. And um, I guess before they come on at eight, you're going to have us all preheat our ovens then, correct? Usually I'll have um, you preheat your oven after we do the first challah. So basically. Okay. okay, so it's fine. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So is there anything? Um, I gave everyone the ingredients. I already took mine out. And I think everyone's going to be fine. And it's, you know, our community is all ages, you know, because it's an adult program. So we're going to have some people probably that are younger in their, you know, late teens. And there was a couple ladies that signed up. One of the ladies signed up yesterday's 89. Wow. So, awesome. Yeah. Always, just, all ages are fine. Yeah, it's all ages, and you know, everyone was super excited, you know, to do it. Do you know about how many people it's gonna uh, it will be? Or not it yet? should be around thirty. Okay, so that's a great number. Um, so yeah, so if you're able just to ask them, I'm, I'll remind them too to put questions in the chat as right. we go. So that'll be helpful for me. Um, that's right. Very little hard. Oh, yeah, we can see the chat too, so that'll be good. Yeah, that's good. And then I could ask you questions. Um, but most of them, I mean, you know, they're going to ask you probably the typical questions. What's the difference of the flowers? You know, do you think it's a big deal if I use the regular egg versus the yolk? You know what I mean? That's actually how I start. Before we even start getting the dough, I talk about the yeast and the flour and all that stuff. So people right. know what's going on. So then if they have any questions at the end, they should be great. Um, will you check the hand cans if sometimes it needs to be? So you guys do this together? Yes, it's a, yeah, well, I'm Danny. this is Danny. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've been doing the, um, well, you, it's always better if I have a helper because that way it is, um, it's, I just go as an autopilot, right? Whenever there's one person, they just sort of do it. When you have a right. second person, it's, well, it's more fun, honestly. And then there's also, he'll come across questions that I might miss and then he can help. Um, okay. Some, it actually works out quite well. Right. Yeah. I'm just sending, and then I've got these people that always say, can you send me the link again? Plucky sidekick. Yeah, you are my plucky sidekick. Or the strong silent type. No, right. they're, they're more plucky. Okay. Danny, what do you do? What do I do? I um, I run an, ad an Amazon advertising agency. Oh, that's great. A life, and then at night, I am Mandy's IT and back-end business person. So, yes. Yeah, Amazing. That's yeah. great. So you don't get a break. That's all day. You know, but this is a this break. This is a break. This is like a little date every time you do one of these classes. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. That's good. Yeah. Most of the time, the husbands are not. I, actually, I'm trying to think. We don't have, I don't think we have any men signed up. But you never know if there'll be a man. Sometimes mm -hmm. they come in. You'll inspire some yes. men to it's feel like confident. It's like a whole untapped market of men making challah. Yes. So. Well, it's funny, Mandy. I had the challah prince. Yes. In Berlin. We hosted him for the J University in January. Yes. yes. Fantastic. Yes. And it was a really nice program. And he came to us from Berlin. Um, I did have a few guys, young guys, that came on, but yeah. mostly it's women. You know, I think. It's a traditional kind of thing. Totally, right? Should I have my bowl over here as opposed to my mixer? Um, so you're doing by hand or you're doing, how are you doing? I'll do it by hand, but also talk about the mixer also. Okay, you know, great. The bread, or the bread machine, whatever one, it's all the same. Okay. Uh, this way they know all the varieties of ways to get their dough together. So okay. 
So should I start letting, well, I'll, should I wait a minute to let yeah, people go ahead and gather the rest of our stuff together yeah. and then we'll come back in a few minutes and you can. Yeah, you guys come back. And then, like I said, we'll, I'll introduce you. And um, I think that's great. All right, okay. awesome. We'll see you in a few minutes. All right, thank you. Okay. Hello. Hello. I don't see anybody, but I see your, I mean, I just see your names. I don't see your faces. I can't start the, I'd open the video. It doesn't allow me to. Really? You'll see faces soon. Hi. How are you, Bonnie? Well, I'm almost, um, ready to show up <laughs> <laughs> i know that feeling how are you right? doing all good all good there's good. sandy hi um, sandy hi sandy she's connecting to audio hi stacy Hello, nice to meet you. You too. How you doing? Good. This is my girlfriend Kelly. Hello, Hi, Kelly. <laughs> are you guys doing it together? We are. Okay. So excellent, Kelly. Oh, so you're going to be back there with Kelly, or you're going to just? Does Kelly have a glass of wine? Uh, it's a bottle of a uh, glass of bubbly. Is is that all right? Are we allowed to drink bubbles? Oh, during that's class? a recommendation. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's great. I love it. That's great. Hi, Iris. You're muted. Hi. Hi. How's your back? Terrible this week. Oh, Iris, you can't catch a break. I, I'm hopeful, though. Oh my gosh. All right. Good to see you. You too. Hi, Kim. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Hello. Sandy. Bonnie, you're ready with lipstick and all. Oh, listen, lipstick, nail polish, you name it, but just a cup of coffee. I'm not indulging. Okay. Oh, you're not indulging. Stacy, yeah, they're drinking in the up there. <laughs> Maybe in the second half. Yeah, exactly. You know what? There's always someone that has a cocktail. Sure. I'll be ready by the second half. I'll join you. <laughs> exactly. Come on, Kim. That's right. You got to do it. Hi, Sandy Goldfarb. You're muted. Sandy, unmute. Unmute. Okay. Am I unmuted? Sandy, great job. How you doing? Good. How about you? Good, it's good to see you on these circumstances. The last time I saw you was at KI last Friday. Right, that was very sad. It was very sad, but Fern was an amazing, amazing human yes. being. He was. My Iris was there. I mean, it was just so heartfelt. Oh, really difficult. Hi, Nina. Oh my God. There we go. Hi. How are ya? Good. How are you? Good. I haven't seen you in ages. I saw a picture of Jada. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, when she was at the formal with Jacob. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She said they looked picture. really nice. Thank you. Yeah. They looked really it's nice on one table. Yeah. yeah. Reese Schaefer. A quarter teaspoons, which is one tablespoon. Right. Right? Right. One yeah. tablespoon is three teaspoons. <laughs> Thank you, Harold. <laughs> oh, Harold's in on this. Great. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is so good. So let's see. Yeah, we'll give it like a, another three minutes. We're expecting. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Sandy. Sandy finds out. We're expecting probably about 30. So you know how everyone is. Everyone comes late. And in Allentown, what do we call it? The typical? Right, Bonnie? Yeah. I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you 
guilty as charged. <laughs> exactly. When you come on time, you're like one of the only ones that's on. It's so funny. <laughs> crazy yeah well it's five to six that's what exactly sandy she's she'll tell you right That's my friend Risa Schaefer coming from Long Island hi Reese hi our boys were were on the phone forever this morning well that's because they are taking a tough accounting class that they've got a midterm already for the summer session that just started like 20 minutes ago yep Yep, and he David had his shot yesterday. His second oh. shot is not feeling well today. Oh, <laughs> and I think I have a feeling Ethan called him to say, "Why weren't you in class?" He had I got you. A professor, yeah. right? Okay, so Risa Schaefer and I met. Oh my gosh, Reese! How old the boys were? Seven or eight years old. Risa and I met our boys went to summer have been going to summer camp together forever and now they're in college together. So we became lifelong friends many, many years ago at Camp Equinoc. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. At Camp Equinoc. Oh, I went to Camp Blue Ridge and I as a um, as a child and then I was a swimming counselor for a year. At Blue yeah, Risa, Sandy went to Blue Ridge. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, and, my, and my cousins all went to Equinox. Isn't that so funny? I remember Sandy told me that. Oh. Yeah, that is it. I'm amazed that the camp is still around. We are too. Yeah. <laughs> With what they're charging. Yeah. yeah. Did you see what they're charging this year? Oh, you know. My because daughter's Em's going. Em's going, right? Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. It's yeah. cool. I think when we started, do you think it was 9-5? Is that right? Probably. Right? It was around there? It's, listen, it's like college. Keeps, every year it goes up. When we went to college, I think when my sister went to college, it was $7,500. <laughs> so it's all relative. All right. When Harold went to college, it was like $800. <laughs> I know. And when I went, it was not much more because I went two years later. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Yeah, Sandy, it's changed a lot, right? It has. Just a little. I think Just my first semester with room and board was like $12,000. Exactly. Like crazy. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll wait one more minute, guys. Everyone's going to be hopping on and then we'll get started. And then whoever's late is late. And uh, so we'll go in a second. But this is how it goes. So if everyone, um, let me just say, Kimberly, is Tracy coming on? She's stuck in traffic on 20. I don't know. Oh my God, it's okay. She's Where is stuck she on really? traffic. Okay. Yeah, she, she just texted me because I asked her if she was coming on and she yeah. said she's stuck. Don't wait for her. Okay, don't worry. I just, uh, Janet just got on. Okay, so we'll get, We'll get started. I'm going to highlight Mandy and Danny, actually. Um, I got to just do that. For, um, spotlight video. And um, I will introduce them. So um, we're ready to roll. So, OK. Welcome everybody to our Mandy Licious with Mandy Silverman, the Hala Guru, and her sidekick and husband, Danny. So, anyone's husband that wants to jump in, feel free. I'm on a lot. Okay. Have a great time. Exactly. So, enjoy an interactive demo by Mandy Licious, Mandy Silverman, the Hala Guru. Mm -hmm. From kneading and braiding to stuffing, this workshop will be thinking, will get you thinking about unique and special shaped Hala's. Mandy amazing. founded Hala Licious in 2013 mm -hmm. in Aaron, Massachusetts. Since then, she's created over 300 mm -hmm. unique. Kala and Babka recipes developed a worldwide following, including over 30,000 Instagram followers. In addition to selling Kala, teaching classes, she loves sharing her recipes, tips, and supporting others who want to make Kala. So welcome, Randy and Danny. Hey, hi, everybody. Oh, this is so exciting. No. 
going to be great. So um, we're going to get going. We're going to start with our dough class. So we're going to learn all about the ingredients and why we're using them. Um, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to pop them in the chat. Danny should be able to see them because he's my special assistant. He's very, um, you're very special. Very, special. very good assistant. Very good assistant. <laughs> um, very I'm very little tech savvy. And he is, and he's also the chef. lets me help you read the screen. So you actually have eyes. Eyes. Uh, Minor. They stop around here. Yes. Yeah. Stop <laughs> at the edge of the counter. <laughs> it's, you know, very well done. It's all so done. it's a good team. Um, but yeah, no, this will be great. And we're so excited mm -hmm. to begin. But what do we do first before okay. we start practicing this we mm -hmm. put yeah. up our hands and mm -hmm. wash our hair no no no, no. So wrong okay i got it backwards yeah we put up our hair yeah and wash our hair there you go everyone it's always hard like... because it takes me the longest <laughs> do my hair okay i'm done uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. wash your hands nice clean environment right. always important to maintain kitchen cleanliness yes ready I'm back okay you can entertain them I'll do a little dance and uh, I don't know what else I'm going to do, but very excited to be here. And um, I always have a lot of fun helping Mandy. And it's like our, they're saying before everyone came on, it's like our little date night sometimes when I get to help out. So, I know, it's always super so fun. It is. We did a class last night. Too. We did. We're Two date nights in a row. Now we're doing this. Woo! Look at this All right. So I hope everyone's all together. Um, we have all, I've given you your ingredients. So if you hopefully you have them with you. If not, don't worry. Um, I can always send you my recipe again. If you have any questions now or after the class or even after the shaping, I my, literally my whole Instagram life, my whole like, is me talking to people about Fala. So really don't worry if you have anything after, but I'm going to try and answer all of our questions along the way. Mm -hmm. Danny's great. It's also wonderful to have a helper just because sometimes I do make a lot of chalas and I sort of go on autopilot. Mm -hmm. And this way, when someone makes a lot of chalas, they sometimes miss little steps that people don't always know. And Danny, very helpful pointing them out. But if I miss something, let me know and I'll try and go um, as slowly as possible for those of you baking along. But I also have to be respectful of the time frame that we're in. So mm -hmm. hopefully everything is all good. Now, first things first, the most important thing that I like to talk about um, before we begin is yeast. All right, now my recipe calls for instant yeast. Ta -da! Um, instant yeast is also known as bread machine yeast. They are interchangeable. They are the same thing. You can use them measure for measure. I love instant yeast because it is an honest yeast. Because you know what? It is ready instantly. Mm -hmm. Right away. You don't. The name on the tin. It is exactly. Mm -hmm. Good job. I couldn't remember that. Yeah, it worked today. <laughs> it worked last no, it sounded like sardines yeah. yesterday, but this the is the name good. on the tin. It's now, instant. So hopefully if you look down at whatever yeast you have, it says instant or bread machine yeast. So that's great. Now I'm gonna tell you about the other yeast that you might have or you might see at the grocery store the next time you're getting things. And I want you to understand what the yeasts do because that'll help with your future baking and with this one. And if we have to make any adjustments because you are using a different kind of yeast, I'll let you know that also so you can make them accordingly, mm -hmm. all right? The most popular yeast that you see and the most that most people might have in their um, refrigerators or cabinets is active dry yeast. It's the most popular yeast, but it is also the biggest liar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it is not active. No. It is not, you, you. if you put it in something, it's not gonna work because it's sleeping and maybe it's on vacation. Maybe it just ate too really much. Jealous. It's like he's a man. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's the yeast we're all jealous of. It's the yeast we want to be, but no. So, but if you do have that, you have to activate it. To activate yeast, it means that you have to put the yeast in water that's 105 degrees. Now, 105 degrees, if you don't have a, like a temperature taker, then um, if you want to put your hand under it, and if your hand feels warm, then you're good. But if it's too hot, you're like, ah, that will kill your yeast because your yeast is also a fragile flower mm -hmm. like me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you don't want it to be too hot because it will kill it. And if it's too cold, it's not going to get out of bed. It's not going to start. So um, very picky. It is. It is a very There's nothing picky. close to active. No. And then you have to get it to be active. You have to um, wet it so it becomes active wet yeast. Not it's, active and it's not dry. No, exactly. It's a big liar. But it's okay. It's a great yeast. So if you look down. If you have active dry, I'm going to teach you right now how to activate it so it can start to um, be activated and we can add it to our ingredients with the rest of us, all right? So this recipe calls for one and a third cup of water. So I want you to add just one cup of water while the rest of us add one and a third cup and take one third cup of water and have it be that 105 degree temperature um, and fill it up and then use um, 
a tablespoon of active dry yeast and pour that into your warm water with a pinch of sugar, all right? And just let that sit. When it bubbles and froths, that means it's activated. That means you did a great job. It's all done. And then it's active wet yeast. And then it's active wet yeast. That just yes. sounds awful. But this is only if you're active dry. Yes, this is only if your yeast is active dry. A lot, mm -hmm. a lot of times that happens because they, people don't realize that there's a difference in the yeast and there is in fact a difference. So I wanna make sure you know. Um, and also just so you know those little packets of yeast, if that's what you're using, those are actually two and a quarter teaspoons. And a tablespoon of yeast is three teaspoons. So you'll need to use one and a little bit of packet. All right. Now, one more thing that might trip you up here is if you look down at your packet of yeast or your jar of yeast and it says, um, it's yes, it's a third cup of water and, and a tablespoon of yeast, right? And so that's what we're going to be putting in a pinch of sugar to prove it. Only if you have active dry. If you don't have active dry and you have the um, instant yeast that the recipe calls for, then you're great. Okay, next. The other thing that we have to do is look down if you have a yeast that says quick rise or rapid rise yeast, all right? Now they are confusing. They say, they say quick rise, um, an instant yeast. And now that is true. Quick rise and rapid rise are forms of instant yeast, just like minute rice is a form of rice. Minute rice is a rice that's been treated, so it's ready in a minute, which is great, um, but you couldn't use it interchangeably in a recipe that calls for rice because it would turn to mush. So um, rapid rise and quick rise yeast don't work so well in this recipe because it um, they are not designed to do a recipe that has this long first rise and then a second rise. Mm. So if this is all you have, Fret not apricots, it's going to be fine. Just go ahead and when we get towards the end of when we come back and we start braiding, I'm gonna tell everyone to put their challahs up for a second rise. Your challah does not need a second rise. You can just put that right in the oven because it's already gonna be poofy enough. And we wanna avoid an override situation. An override would mean that your braids all sort of melt together and don't look braidy, which is fine, but sometimes that's not the look that we're going for. Hmm. All right, okay. so I just wanna make sure. Instant yeast or bread machine yeast, a tablespoon of it. Active dry, make sure that you've activated it. And quick or rapid rise yeast, um, just make sure that we don't do the second rise at the end. Does anyone have any questions about their yeast? No, they seem good. Um, Mandy, let us just ask you. So the tables, are you using the one and third cup water? You want warm water regardless of the yeast? No, it just can be regular water. You don't need to be warm ever. You okay. have to keep your water warm. The only time you're talking about temperature is if you're using active dry. All those instructions were just for people who had active dry and it's just one third cup of the water. It needs to be that temperature so you can in, um, activate the yeast in. Quick, right. quick question. I mm -hmm. bought the little packet from Fleshman's and it says rapid rise and instant yeast on the packet. Like, wh so what is that? <laughs> so like minute rice is a form of rice that's already been treated. In, um, rapid rise yeast is a form of instant yeast. So it's not the same, just like minute rice isn't the re like regular rice, it is rice. So a rapid rise yeast is instant yeast, mm. but it's not the instant yeast that we're using right now. But if you ask what you have, don't even worry, but just do what I say and, um, and one of off that second rise and you'll be fine, okay? Should we have all put our, I put my yeast in a third cup of water because I have what she said with the packet. Right, so dry. now it just looks like mush. That's all right, just leave it there? Yeah, just leave it, that's, it's activating. It should look like bubbles. Yeah, that's what, yeah, but I'm saying it's just like, and that's what you're gonna pour in instead of the dry. Correct, because you've uh, added the yeast to that water, so it's yep. all just gonna be in your yeasty mush. All right, great. Now, the next thing I wanna make sure that we're all working on the same page with is um, bread flour. The recipe calls for four and a quarter cups of bread flour. Now, bread flour is not the same as all-purpose flour. Bread flour has a higher gluten content, a higher protein content. And what that does is makes your dough squish together easier and faster um, because that glutinous bread is great you know, for combining it. And the goal is always to have to add less flour, right? The less flour you have to add, the easier it is to come together, the easier it is for you, and the better your bread will taste. But that said, if all you have is all-purpose flour, don't worry at all. But if when we're using four and a quarter cups plus some if your dough is sticky, you might have to add more. Some people actually have to use like a cup more. That's the difference. That's how important bread flour is versus um, all-purpose. All right, so just be prepared and don't worry about it. As long as your dough gets to the right consistency, no matter how much flour you have to add, it will be fine and delicious, okay? So um, with that, we're gonna just start Combining our ingredients. So, Danny, right. we're going to go through that. Danny, 
hand cam. Ta -da! Ta -da! Ta -da! All right, so I don't see my nails are still pretty. Um, well, no, I, I'm sorry, I should have painted mine. I should have done it. All right, all right well, here, we here we go. Here we go. So this is four and a quarter cups of bread flour. I'm going to stick that in. Now you can be using your bread machine for this, your KitchenAid. It's totally fine. Um, they're all going to be doing the same sort of thing in the beginning. We're all going to be sort of looking at to create the ideal dough consistency. And it doesn't matter what you're making it in. You might have to alter like the, a little bit of more water or a little bit more flour as you go, regardless of what you make it in. Okay. Awesome. So then this is a half cup of sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. Now I call for, this is just a half cup of white sugar, but I'm all about making cow your own and creating fun new things. So if you're ever feeling adventurous, my rule is that sugar is sugar is sugar, right? So if you can wanna ever do brown sugar, it's delicious in there. Honey is delicious in there. Molasses, um, pure maple syrup. All those are sweeteners that you could be using in here in lieu of sugar, measure for measure. Okay, just for your own creative purposes. All right, okay. now this is two teaspoons of table salt okay so wait there for just one minute the table salt is awesome because it's usually easy to find i find that it has the most flavor all right i'm gonna wait for one more second and then we're going to move on to the wet ingredients okay you ready i'm ready all right here, here we, go. we go i always save the yeast for last though. there's no reason why i just do it okay best for, best for last so this is one and a third cup water just regular room temperature water to use cold water Use warm water. I want you using boiling water because boiling water will always kill your yeast. All right, so that's it. One and a third cup of water. Plop it in the bowl. And then I'm using one third cup canola oil. Now I use canola or vegetable oil, but people use olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, a whole bunch of oils are used in there. And uh, they all have excellent results. It's just if you want to have a good taste to your oil. Um, I also, uh, that's why canola is a taste-free oil, which is why I prefer using it. Um, but keep in mind that different oils have different viscosities, that means mm -hmm. there's different thicknesses, so you might have to alter the amount of flour or water accordingly, but that's not a big deal. I'll show you that in a minute um, as you go. All right, and now Danny's favorite part. The yeast. No, oh. no. Oh, the da -da -da. All right, seriously, one in five times I have trouble, and the other four <laughs> times it's all good. All so right. hopefully this is one of you're, the four. You're setting them up for. I'm just letting out, just managing <laughs> expectations. Set the bar low, aim high. Not with the up. eggs though. The eggs need to be just in this little container. What? You said aim high, set oh. low. <laughs> just put the eggs there. So we're just going for the yolks. Right? Just the yolks. The yolks are the only part we need. Um, a lot of times I get the question, why just the yolks, Mandy? And it's because. Why just the yolks? Thank you. I like I like the texture that it provides. It's a certain texture and richness um, that they have, and I. When I was creating the recipe, I know that a lot of recipes for challah have like eight egg yolks or six egg yolks. Tons. So I saw I messed around. I said, okay, will it work with five egg yolks? And it tasted just the same as it did with six. So I said, what about four egg yolks? And it tasted just the same. And then I tried three egg yolks and it tasted gross. So I changed. <laughs> that's why I ended up with four yeah. egg yolks. All right. So that's what I prefer to do. But you also have um, instructions to always make your dough vegan if you're ever out of eggs. All right, okay. fantastic. And why that, do we separate the eggs that way? With, with our, our hands? hands? Oh, because yeah. it's the fastest way I find. See, have, people do have egg separators and things like that in the shell, but I find that even though it's a little gross, hands do an excellent job separating it. Now, if all right. We, um, can I ask a quick question? Sure. If we put our yeast in water, should we still add the water? How much water did you put your yeast in? You told me a third a cup, right? Correct. So it's um, a one and a third cup is the total water needed for this. So, so you make, so you'll add one cup here. And then that third cup of water is the one that is mixed with the yeast. Oh, good. That was a good question. Okay, good. <laughs> it was a great question. Okay. But now all the yeast, no matter if it's been proofed in water or if it's just all ready to go, you can just plop that in. Sorry, I took your job. Amy. No, that's fine. I my, got my hands are ready to start mixing. Okay, so it's all good. Here you go. All right, now let's talk about kneading dough for a minute. Um, I'm going to have you just reach in and start grabbing. Some people like to use a spoon to mix it up together. I'm very pro just making less dishes dirty. So I always just have, also because Danny's doing it for me, it's much easier. Yeah. <laughs> but always that's mix it up. No, no, really not. Um, but no, it's much easier to come together. Um, and you'll notice that in a minute after all the ingredients come together, Danny's going to use this part of his hand, the heel of his palm, to knead the dough. What this does is it helps squish all that gluten together that I was talking about. You want to squish and squish and make it into a nice cohesive ball. 
a um, mistake that sometimes I see people make is they like squish, tear the dough and squish it up together, tear the dough and squish it together. Um, what that's doing actually is sort of going backwards in your work because you're squishing things together. You want them to get nice and smooth and soft. And when you tear the dough, what actually happens is you're sort of starting from scratch and you have to work harder to get it together. So just use the side, the, the heel of your palm if you're able to and push it against the side of your bowl. Um, the same thing to look out for in your mixer because that dough hook that you're putting it in it is going to, you'll notice that it sort of sometimes looks like a finger. So it can often tear the dough. So people will sometimes get to like a really almost good consistency on their mixer, but then they'll have to, then it'll start getting sticky again. And that's because the dough hook is starting to tear it. So just make sure that your dough hook that on your mixer is sort of only at a low medium speed as it gets towards the end. Or sometimes people prefer to take the dough out of the mixer just for that last couple minutes of kneading. Because you are going to be kneading here for five full minutes, no cheating at least five full minutes. Sometimes people need even more time than that because you're like a gentle kneader. When I started doing classes with Danny and I did not realize this at all, he was a gentle kneader. I was like, what are you doing? He was like, lightly tapping the dough. Even like a It'll little- come together. <laughs> It'll be all right. Yeah, that's, you know, that works with children sometimes but not necessarily <laughs> dough. You have to push it in, really knead it. And if you're a more gentle kneader for whatever reason, it's going to take you longer. So getting to that proper texture is the most important. There's no, um, using um there's no over kneading the dough at this point let's see someone asked a question can i use the rapid rise yeast yes you can use the rapid rise yeast but we're gonna if you're using it it's not it's um you should not do the second rise okay um so yes. i have a problem mm -hmm. it's sticky all right so see danny's hand look at that the dough is all attached to it this if your dough looks like this it is sticky um, so it's you're particularly gonna, humid in here. Today. It is, yeah. So we all, so this is a thing that people don't realize about challah recipes is that sometimes you're going to have to add a little bit more flour or water, depending on what kind of flour you're using, what the humidity, not only in the state and city that you're living in, is, but also in your kitchen. It took me forever to realize why in the summer my dough was drier than it was in the winter. And it's because we have the air conditioner on in the summer. So the air was um, not quite as wet. All right, but it doesn't matter as long as you get your dough to the proper consistency, right? Yeah, okay, very, very moist. Okay, but this also is a thing that happens. It is humid. Um, so don't worry if you have to add more flour, it happens. The problem with sticky dough is that you won't be able to shape it. It's not gonna be one of those recipes that people say, oh, as it sits, it'll come together. It's not. As good a consistency as you're going to get now, that's as good as it's going to get. It's not going to get better as it rises. Now, another thing that can happen to, to a lot of people is that they notice that their dough is too dry. Dry dough is crumbling. It's very hard. There's no squishy squish when you go to squish it together. So if you're just sort of like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. That's probably the sound that people make when they make it. But don't worry if your dough is too dry. You can just add a little water to your dough ball. And um, sometimes, actually, this is kind of funny, but when you add, um, when you have to add water to your dough, mm -hmm. you have to add water to your dough. You have to add a little pinch of flour after it just so the water can get sort of the traction to sort of go into the dough. All right. Fabulous. <clears throat> More? Let me know. Okay. Now, the most important thing is, is that I said is the dough consistency and that it's very smooth yeah. at the end. It's hot and it's finally got it. Right? So this happens with everybody. So in your bread machine, this can happen. In your uh, mixer, this can happen. And in your bowl, it can happen. It doesn't matter. A uh, misconception people have when using their bread machines is they assume that the bread machine will do it all for them, especially even on the dough setting. And that's not true because you're going to be forming your dough. And like I said, the wet dough is not conducive to braiding. Also, the dry dough is almost an easier mistake to make because people so fear wet dough they just add the more flour they add the more flour they add the more flour but they don't realize if you add too much flour and your dough ball is too dry um there's no room for that yeast to do its magic right the dough can't stretch and if you ever have dough that tastes particularly floury or um that tastes particularly floury or it's just not pretty because it looks almost like cake like it's like crap like it's not quite right that's almost always because either um, your dough was too dry or someone used active yeast without proofing it. I mean, so that because that they had no, or they used dead yeast, which is also a thing that sometimes people have, but hopefully not. It looks like you finally did it. Man. Yeah, we're there. We've reached. Now I just have to get it all together. <sighs> Very strong. 
It looks pretty close though. Yeah, I mean, you're actually really I probably good. could stop any second now. No. Mandy, yeah. did you get that question from Janet? Um, about the instant yeast? Yeah. Yes, instant yeast is um I you can it's bread, it's you can't use instant yeast that's rapid rise in the same fashion that you would use this. Okay. Instant yeast, if you don't see instant yeast, it's also bread machine yeast is also the same thing. Um, but you can also so if bread machine yeast, one of those two, you can usually find at your grocery stores, um, if not Amazon. But I recommend instant, instant yeast is worth it. It's something amazing. But if you can't find it, active, I'd rather you use active dry yeast and activate it than um, continue to use rapid rise yeast. Because rapid rise gives some people some little overrising issues on occasion. The but dough is such a nice consistency. Oh, I'm so glad. Good and squishy. All right, so we don't, but we do want to make sure you need it for at least that full five minutes because even if the dough looks like it's coming together and you're done, you're not. <laughs> I used to make that mistake when I first started making sala. I was like, okay, the dough is all good. I don't need to add any more flour or water, so I'm done. But my, uh, it was for babka. My mom was, I was like, mom, I couldn't understand why my mom's babka was so much better than mine. We literally used the same recipe standing next to each other and hers would be amazing. And she's like, well, you do this, you do this. I'm like, yes, yes. She's like, and then you need it for five minutes. I'm like, well, I need it for a couple of minutes. And she's like, no, no, the five minutes. And you know what? She's totally right. Just like she always is. But um, the full five minutes really makes a big difference in this. So on your mixer, and then your that is where a big um, help of your mixer or your dough um, or your bread machine would be is because they're doing all this work for you. But look how strong the eating looks. You do look <laughs> you do look very woo, Danny. You do look very you think the Hulk got strong lifting weights, but no, actually he just made a lot of color. He's the Hulk. Yeah. That, was, that was his name before they <laughs> he commercialized it. Hulk. Incredible Hulk. He hulked up. It all makes sense now. Oh my oh. goodness. I, I know, little known fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, you know what we need to do is make an incredible Hulk hub that's all green. I have the, all the sprinkles. I know. All right. How do you feel? Do you feel like we're, you we're, I think we're pretty close. It's, oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's tacky, but not um, sticky. So when we touch it, we feel a little stick. That's okay, but it doesn't stick to our hands. It's That's not great. Quite as smooth as yeah, I feel like, like you might need a little, a little more flour yeah. in another couple minutes. Yeah. Last night, a man's work is never done. Oh, this afternoon's dough was perfect. Mm -hmm. Like straight away, I didn't have to do anything, and then mm -hmm. I divided into pieces, and they were each exactly the same like measurement. Oh, I was having, I was on fire today. Not really actual fire. That would be no, painful. That's bad. All right, now well, that was great. Look at you. All right, does anyone have any questions as they're kneading or want to show me their dough? Because I'm happy to help you if you're having any questions about it. Put it on to uh, gallery view for you. Okay. Nope, all good. All right, kneading. Fabulous. All right, so just make sure you knead it for five, the five full minutes or until the dough becomes smooth if it's more than five minutes. Now, this is the part where people get very there's lots of varying opinions about rising, right? Your yeast, if your yeast um, all in together, how we have to do our first rise for 90 minutes, where do you put your dough? I always just leave my dough in the bowl that I needed it in. I sprinkle a little, when Danny's done, you'll see, I'll sprinkle a little flour on the bottom of the dough ball and then a little flour on the top of the dough ball. And then I just put a dry towel right on top because we look, wow, that actually is spectacular, Danny. <laughs> Look, that is really lovely. So um, here we can actually show them right now. I'll do a little flour. Some people like to use oil or whatever, but we actually work so hard to get our dough to that just right consistency that I think that to add any extra moisture, even if it's just greasing your bowl or wetting your towel on top is sort of counterproductive because um, if anything, as this dough rises, it might get a little stickier. So we don't want to certainly add to that, but you can, I leave mine on my counter. You can put yours in a warm oven or a proofing drawer or a special spot in your kitchen if you want. Don't worry about it at all. Whatever is your thing, I always go easy. So I leave mine on my counter. And it will. Now, this is this is all, this is my warning I'm going to give you. All right. And I, so don't, if you come back and you tell me this, I will know that you were not listening. <laughs> all right. So sugar and salt are yeast inhibitors. That means that sugar and salt keep your yeast from going crazy. If you have a recipe that has just a teeny tiny little bit of sugar, just a little teeny tiny bit of salt, your dough is going to go crazy in this hour and a half. So, but for me, I'm all about deliciousness. And my name is me delicious. Um, that's my, my mother named me for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and 
that means I took the salt and I took the sugar and every time I made the recipe, I took it to the edge. That means there's just about as much sugar and as much salt as there can be and still get a proper rise at the end. But it does mean that this first rise is not a huge first rise. It's not going to double in size. It's not going to be overflowing your bowl. I mean, if you let it sit there for a few days, it would. But that's not going to happen. It's going to grow a little. It should show some movement. Um, but if it's not huge, don't worry. If you ever wanted to have a bigger rise, just cut back the sugar and salt in the recipe because that's what's holding you back. But it should. What's going to happen is there'll be this little, this first rise here, then a little poof of a second rise and then a big third rise. It's just the like life, right? <laughs> you can't have taste and poop. Yes. Oh, no, I don't, like, I gotta, don't need the You gotta poop. hold back on something. Oh, my hair is poofy enough. I don't need my <laughs> dough to be all in that. Fair enough. Does anyone have any questions before we go and let our dough rise and before we come back? No? All right, you guys. Well, that was awesome. We'll come back. Don't forget to bring your chocolate chips for our chocolate chip stuff call. And if you have a rolling pin, or if you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a glass or a cup. That works too. Um, and a brush for your egg wash. Right? Great. Did I take your name? Nope. All right. Great. Well, we'll see you at eight o'clock. We are very excited. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.